All right, Eddie, Mike, Sebi, thank you very much. Welcome, everyone, to our continuing coverage, ESPN's coverage of the Little League World Series. It is presented by T-Mobile. Another close game. The final score down there, 2-1. to one. And up here, we get set to see the team from the Northwest, Seattle, Washington, take on the team from the New England region, Gray Little League, the Gray Gloucester Little League team from Maine. Take a look at the standings. The teams that are 1-0 in a good spot. You get a couple of days off, too. And there have been some teams we haven't seen yet, like Nolansville, Tennessee. They don't play their first game until tomorrow. The 0-1s, got to make sure they win. Otherwise, their Little League World Series title hopes are over. As we continue here at Lomity Stadium in Seattle, Washington, and Gray, Maine. The story, Todd Frazier, Tim Kirch, and Julie Foudy in just a little bit. Now, it has been all about pitching traditionally in the beginning of these tournaments it's about aces and now we're seeing the kings on day two and they should be equally good no team including this first game more than five hits collective batting average day one 115 we had a team from rhode island win a game in which they had one hit <laughs> we're going to see more great pitching today Right, and Caden Oliver is the best pitcher on Maine. He is going today in the regionals, 11 and two-thirds innings, one run allowed, 20 strikeouts, fastball, curveball, really quiet kid. They leave him alone before the game and during the game. He's their best pitcher. <laughs> yeah, and uh, flip side, Trey Kirchhoff has been dominant this whole regional coming in, 21 innings pitch, 11 Ks, giving up one earned run. They talk about he's a two-pitch pitcher, but at the same time, they call it a sweeper, but they don't want to say sweeper. He calls it a slider that hurts. Horizontal action. It's going to be fun to watch today. And yeah, we all get a little confused between sliders and sweepers and Laredos and whatnot. We were just in Seattle, of course, for the Major League Baseball draft and the Derby and the All Star game. It's just a few blocks north of the University of Washington, beautiful UW, 15 minutes from downtown Seattle. Long trip here, and they are excited. Let's meet the kids. My name's Matthew Fisher, and my favorite player is Moose Castillo. My name is Rylan Jackson, and my favorite player is Chris Bryant. My name is Nolan Chang, and my favorite school subject is lunch. My name is Sam Santos. My favorite food is lasagna. My name is Nathan Erlichman. My favorite food is my father's grilled cheese. My name is Brooke Shuey, and my favorite actor is Bill Murray. My name is Calvin Shumway, and my favorite MLB baseball player is Ty France. My name is Campbell Foster, and my favorite team is Washington Huskies football. My name is Brett Taylor, my favorite food is sushi. My name is Trey Kirchhoff, and my favorite player is Barry Bonds. My name is Larson Ng, and my favorite baseball player is Hulu Rodriguez. My name is Owen Luke, and my favorite food is tacos. Here is the man that calls the pitches. He's in his 16th year of coaching. His name is Christian Shuey. Between he, Stoss Jackson, his assistant, who also played himself at the University of Portland, a relief pitcher in the Cubs organization. They're deep into all of the film work and studying swings, etc. They feel like they're in a good spot, and they do believe that they have a batting order of 12 that is really benefiting from the continuous order. They love the bottom of the order. They are very productive and feel like their depth has been one of the reasons they got here. Caden Oliver in the state title game against Augusta, Maine, went five innings. He did not allow a hit. He struck out 13. He struck out seven in a row at one point. And the first guy he's going to face is Nolan Chang, a 12-year-old, 5'4", 118 pounds. Got a relationship with Blake Snell. His brother, Spencer, gets taught by Blake Snell. Seems like nowadays everybody's got a little action with a major league ball player, somebody in an organization. I love every second of that. So Maine, who considers themselves the constant underdog here for the first time, as the Little League, and the first pitch is outside ball one. And there's the fastball. He also throws a curveball. He'll throw the curveball at any point. Meaning behind in the count, ahead, it doesn't matter. One ball and one strike as Oliver throws to Mason Emerge, and he's the catcher. Caleb Barker's your third baseman. Gage Ryu is at short. Benjamin Gilmore is a 10 year old at second. Mason Westcott is at first. Ball. 
Around the outfield, Nathan Shelley, Anthony Piccone is in center, and Grant Braun is in right. Big difference, Todd, between a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old, right? That's, that's a, big that's a gap. huge, huge gap. Hey, but they can play ball, too. Yeah, Gilmore is a terrific athlete at second base. Good swing, foul back. Brad Shelley was telling me a lot of people from Maine took that eight-hour bus trip overnight just to get here. You can see this packed house for them right now on the right side. Todd was taking notes. He's got a new notebook. He looked like a real reporter today. I'm, it was tremendous. Hey, my mentor right next to me. You help me out. Literally, everything you do, <laughs> he does. He ate the same food. He went to the bathroom at the same time. He went down the field to watch infield. Why not? And when, when you ask him what the count is, <laughs> he knows. <laughs> hey, I'm all over him. Three and two. Strike three. Good start for Caden Oliver. Nothing to it right there. Just fastball. Here it is. Coming right into your kitchen. Great pitch, 3-2. Find a way to get it outside in that corner. Great start for Gray Little League. Now Trey Kirchhoff. He is 5'2", 103. They call him Trey Daddy. And this guy can absolutely crush the baseball. Got in on his fist there. Again, Ravi, one of the beauties of this sport. It's open to all shapes and sizes. This is a little kid, yet he's a pitcher. He's got tremendous power. Doesn't matter how big or small or you are, if you've got the skills to play this game, you can play it. Off speed at the letters, he gets the call. This is a Seattle Little League team that has benefited by turning up the pitch machine velocity. They are 8-0 since the state championship with a plus 80 run differential. Oh. That misses a little high. And to your point, Tim, he may not be a big guy at 5-2-103, but he was the first 11-year-old in league history to win the home run derby and then repeated it this year. Up the middle on a slow roller, Ryu. Nice play, but it's dropped by the first baseman, Mason Westcott. And that will put Kirchhoff on first. Good job by Ryu to get over there and make nice a good job. throw. Oh one. Looked like everything there was done to perfection. Goes to his left, makes a nice play. One hop throw, just couldn't funnel that ball in his hand. That's all it was. Got to find a way to use your eyes just a little bit longer there. Here's five foot seven, 148 pound, three hitter Owen Luke. And this is up the middle, could be two. Steps on the bag, high throw, and they get the runner at second, and that will be it. Ryu grabbed it right before it hit the bag. He was able to step on it and then hurried that throw and sailed it just a little bit. Another nice play going up the middle there, had an opportunity, came up. It's one of those things as a middle infielder, you got to stay low as possible when you're throwing that ball. Once you come up, the arm angle changes and the ball flies on you. That's a big shortstop, long legs. It's hard to stay down. You're right, Todd, but they made a nice play on that. This is the cleanup hitter. He's the shortstop. Larson Ang, right field, down the line, and just foul. Tell you what, from yesterday, they're not wasting any time here. Let's go. They're getting a pitch, and they're trying to get on them early. I love this. And I love that every one of these kids is in a swing mode first, and I love that. We can teach play discipline later, but at this age, you should be up there thinking, I'm going to swing the bat. Is that what you did when you were young? <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Ang 5'8", 125. Julio Rodriguez, his favorite player, oh, and he got learned off the helmet. The curveball, he leaned in and he connected him. So he'll have runners at first and second. You want to walk? You got time. You got, hey. And again, Ravi, that's time. the other thing about these kids. They stand right on top of the plate. They are absolutely fearless. The kid just got hit in the head and he ran to first like nothing happened. Fear is a real part of the game, especially for young kids. It's a hard game to play. It's a dangerous game to play. But these kids stay right in there. Really impressive. He almost looked like a soccer player heading a ball into the goal. I think he realized this is going to be soft. I got a helmet. And he was cheering all the way down to first. So now a big chance for Nathan Ehrlichman, the catcher. 
who had a very good regional, went four for six, two RBIs, double and two walks. He was on base three-fourths of the time he was up. Throwing a little gasolina there. He said, here comes another one. Another one, too. Good one. And he jumps ahead 0-2. Look at Ehrlichman. There is not a lot of room between him and that plate. And that elbow is almost out over it. On the corner, and that's a good job by Caden Oliver. He strikes out Ehrlichman. They will strand two and get by with an error. We will see the kids from Maine when we come back. Little League Baseball World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Mix it up. Get that blue, get that green, maybe a little red when we come back. Back with Timmy, Todd, Julie Foudy, Carl Ravitch, Lomity Stadium, Washington. Had a couple of guys on, couldn't bring them in, and now Maine. Winner of the New England region will come to the plate for the first time. Maine's about a two hour drive from Boston. There are a lot of fans of the Red Sox there, just to, about 20 minutes away from Portland, Maine. It is in the Lakes region. There's a big lake called Lake Sebago. They are literally right on Little Lake Sebago. And this is the first Maine team here in a long time. Let's meet the kids. My name is Ben Gilmore, and my favorite artist is Luke Combs. My name is Ivan Deemer, and my favorite actor is Owen Wilson. My name is Camden Beckwith, and my favorite MLB player is Alex Verdugo. My name is Chase Pacanza, and my favorite player is Raphael Devers. My name is Nathan Shelley, and my favorite food is King Crab Legs. My name is Grant Brand, and my favorite athlete is David Posternot. My name is Caden Oliver, and my favorite subject in school is math. My name is Caleb Barker, and my dream job is to become a Maine State Game Warden. My name is Zachary Feehan Jr. and my favorite athlete is Tiger Woods. My name is Mason Westcott and my favorite food is tacos. My name is Alex Hamlin and my favorite band is The Score. My name is Mason Emergent and my favorite actor is Adam Sandler. My name is Anthony Picconi and my favorite MLB player is Ronald Acuna Jr. My name is Gay Drew and my favorite food is a lobster. Handful of years back, Todd, we had a team from New Hampshire here, Adam Sandler. Grew up in New Hampshire, played Little League ball there. I think he once pulled over on a highway during a drive because he called in to our game here. But Adam Sandler retains a great deal of popularity amongst these guys. Adam Sandler's a beast, man. Why wouldn't he? He is very, very funny. Brad Shelley is the main manager. And he is the one that said, you know, we, we like this. We embrace this underdog role. It, it's hard to just get out of the state that we're in, let alone winning a region. And man, they got 14 kids on this team. You got to go through the entire batting order before Gage Ryu will get back up again. Hey. Ryu is a 5'7", 121-pounder on the first pitch, off speed. Kirchhoff, he has the ability, according to his coaches, to throw it mid-70s. He really wants to continue to harness the off-speed stuff. First two pitches break the balls. I love it. I've been struck by how these kids, they don't just throw hard. They have a really good idea what they're doing out there. Back it up with another one, Todd. You got two of them. Yeah, might as well. Hey. Uh, good catch. Tell you what, you can tell the game has definitely changed. <laughs> Three breaking balls <laughs> to start off the game. It's not necessarily that they had the bite, it's just the speed. The distance from when getting the home plate from the pitcher's mound to home plate. Just a little frisbee up there. Boom. Remember the field is about two thirds the size of a regulation field. 46 feet from the mound to the mitt, 225 feet around the outfield. Zachary Fian. He bends another one. He's thrown four breaking pitches, all strikes. Coach told me, we don't throw, we pitch. And that's what this kid has done, four pitches in. Ball. There's that first fastball. So Zachary's favorite player that he lists is Hank Aaron. Mm -hmm. How great is that, that we can go back that far and that's his favorite player? I love it.
a lot of these guys, when you ask them how they fell in love with Hank Aaron, Barry Bonds, another one, Babe Ruth shows up. Much of it has to do with the long conversations they have with their dads on these extended summers and the time they have together. Another strikeout as Thien goes down, and that's two to start. All right, Todd, you go back to the bench and try to explain to everybody else So you've got to be ready for this breaking pitch and, and maybe come up with a way to address it. Yeah, and I, I think at a young age, it's very hard to tell these young kids what to do. But if you can tell them to sit back, try and drive the ball the other way, you're still going to be out in front, but you're going to get a better barrel to the ball. And as you can see right now, the second shortstop and third base are actually playing in. Second and first are playing back. So if you're a right-handed batter, you can see that and make a little adjustment. And no, I'm going to get a lot more off-speed pitches. There have been five swings and misses. Well, hold on before me. I would move up. Right now, I would tell the guys, move up as much as you can into the top of the box here. What does that do? Try to get it before yeah, it breaks? Catch them. Catch them out in front so you can scoop them. We call scooping it. What a great combination, right. though, because the curveball is so slow. Whatever, sweeper, slider, curveball. Curveball, fastball away. This has really worked so far. Ball. Emergence making a great adjustment here. Getting on the plate a little more, actually, and up just a little bit. Let's see. They said he'll throw anything. 2-2, two, two, Tim. 2 <laughs> And a walk-off homer to win the state title. That goes to the backstop, so a good at bat. And the count goes from Frazier's favorite, two and two. Every time it's two and two, he looks at me and he goes, Tim, it's two and two. And he makes a little <laughs> lean to the right. How's that go again? He goes, he goes like this. One. It's two, two and two. <laughs> Let him know. You can't just do this. You just got to lean a little bit. Who taught you that, Todd? That's you, big boy. <laughs> ball four. That's ball four. And after two strikeouts, emerging. The first base runner for Maine. Kirchhoff's got to shake that off. A little frustrated that that wasn't called the strike for him. Kids from Curacao benefited from the ball that was hit over the second baseman high in a fifth inning 1-1 game lost in the sun. They plated the second run and they ended up winning 2-1 to one, so they get to put Curacao on the bracket on the winner's side. He's eight for eight on his breaking pitches. Caleb Barker's the third baseman. Had four hits in the regional. Ooh, had one there to hit. And he spun right through it. Caleb's mom was a college softball player. So when mom and dad are athletic, there's a good chance you're going to be athletic as a kid. Real interesting because the two coaches really worked together. Shelley and Stosh Jackson, Over who was here, a right? pitcher in that minor leagues Taylor. with the Cubs. Down here. They're in okay. each other's ear. The breaking pitch has been so good. And that looked like a challenge with a fastball, and Barker just missed it. Kind of show me fastball back with the other one. Oh. Time he went in with the curveball against the left-handed hitter. He can spot it. He moves it around beautifully. These kids are very aware, too, of pitch count rules, et cetera. And when you had a close 3-2 pitch call, that means we're adding more pitches in the inning. Rounded a third, fielded nicely, and a good throw across by Brett Taylor. Hard hit ball by Caleb Barker, but that will do it in the first. Yes, we can see. Curacao is a winner. <laughs> Five kids back from last year's runner-up. And they get off to a good start. We're off to a good start as well here. We're back. Matthew Fisher set to come up, the first baseman. And this was the Northwest Region Championship. He knew it right off the bat. Little walk-off piece. He had four hits, including that one, four RBIs. And that helped get the team from Seattle here. It also meant that everybody that's involved with that team is likely to be here. And Matthew Fisher set to come up.
Julie Foudy joins us for the first time. So who's aboard? We've got Ravi, Matthew Fisher's sister, Corinne, and Grandpa Walt, who we're going to get to in one sec. But first, Corinne, I don't know if you saw Matthew's bio, but they talk about if they win the lottery, most kids are saying, I'm going to buy a Lamborghini, I'm going to build a baseball field. Matthew says, I'm going to give to organizations that cure type 1 diabetes. I know you have type 1 diabetes, so what did that mean to you? Well, I mean, it was incredibly, incredibly sweet. And the funny backstory on this is, he first said that he wanted to spend the money on girls, but then realized that that really wasn't... Ow! Sorry. Never apologize for cheering. <laughs> um, so he first said he wanted to spend it on girls, but that wasn't ESPN worthy. So then he decided to think of a much sweeter answer, and I'm just touched because he's such a fireball, but then he'll have moments where he says just the sweetest thing, so it really meant a lot. I, I was impressed as well. Walt, you have been watching Little League World Series for 30 years. Never have been to Williamsport. Never been to Pennsylvania. <laughs> How does it feel not only being here as a fan, but you're watching your grandson play in that Little League World Series? Terrific. <laughs> does it meet all the expectations, having watched it for so many years? Yep, it does. <laughs> it's a really interesting venue. What have you liked most about it, besides watching Matthew just hit that single? Sorry, I missed that. What have you liked most about it, besides watching Matthew hit that single? Just all the surrounding stuff. On TV, all you see is the game itself. But the atmosphere here is pretty interesting. Well, I have a feeling you're going to be going down that hill in a little bit. Is that true? <laughs> Get down that hill, Walt. All right, you guys enjoy this. Congratulations on being here. Grandpa Walt here after 30 years of watching it. Yeah, Julie, that was sweet. Corinne was great. That is what an older sister is going to do. I mean, she'll sell out the brother if she's got her. Let, <laughs> let's tell the real story before we get into how uh, big a heart he has. But how great is it? We're interviewing <laughs> the kid, and he gets a knock at the Little League World Series while we're talking to his sister and his grandfather. It's great. He saw that ball on the ground, and it appeared to be very, very close to going over the bag and underneath the glove. And this is going to be a great angle of Westcott. It is moving back in that direction. Wow. Of course, all that matters here is where is the ball when it crosses yeah. the bag? Yeah. It's a bouncing ball. And listen as well here, that ball could go around first and hit the line and still be a foul ball. Correct. And it, it was, did. It looks like it does hit the line, but did that ball go over first base? That is a really close call. And that was such a good angle you guys had, Doug, and those from from right field, the ball started absolutely in foul territory, but you could tell it was making its way back towards fair territory. Lawrence Stein, the first base umpire. This is going to be an even better view here if we can get him out of the way. Oh. <laughs> All right, I think it's a fair ball. I, do I too. think it bounced over the bag yep. in fair territory. Again, it doesn't matter where it lands. It only matters where is the ball when it crosses the bag. I think it crossed in fair territory. Now, Tim, the next question is, so let's say they do call it fair. Is it one base? Where do the runners go? Because he stopped running around in second base. So Right. right. If this is umpire's discretion, and they will say, you stopped at second. That's where you were not giving you another, ba uh, another base. It's going to be a fair here. ball. Runners at first and second. There we go. And you can see a little frustration down there from the third base coach because he figured, especially with athleticism of Fisher, he would have been at third. In any event, they got the call right. And now it is first and second. Nobody out. And that was officially ruled an error. So two errors charged to Maine. Now here's Brooks Shuey. The son of the manager, Christian Shuey, the center fielder. Her. Main phrase went into that third baseman, Barker crashing. Ryu and the wheel play went over to cover third base. Smart move by all. Shuey told me he's the one that taught the Whoa. sweeper to Kirchhoff here. Yeah, I said, dude, you're a lefty. I said, no, 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 no. He, he got it from me. I said, OK, all right. 
One ball, one strike, no score. Top of the second inning, first game for both teams. Gets the call there. Showed bunt the first two pitches, not that one. Ball in the dirt, lost, and they will advance each sure. base runner. That throw down to third was close, but Fisher was in there easily. Now second and third. Wild back. pitch, sure, to around. Oliver. He's going to go back. Let's get back there. Go back there. Two RBIs in the regional for Shuey. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout there for Oliver. His third of the game. This is where you're just hoping for one of your guys just to put the ball on the ground somewhere to force in a run here. Infield staying back right. here. You early okay with that, Todd? It's early. No, Second I, inning. Right. I, I think you come in. I, I, I honestly do. I think you come in here, move the outfield in a little bit, take your chance. Right. Then Jackson, that's inside. Fisher will stay there at third base. I'm with you, Todd. You got an overpowering pitcher. Got some weak contact. It's going to be a low scoring game, likely. Outfield's playing right field, especially. Brand back there playing really back in right field. Jackson on the ground. That's going to get through. Fisher's going to score. Right fielder can't pick it up. Braun, his throw is late. And also in is Taylor. Ryland Jackson knocks in two. Washington's got a 2 0 lead. Just what we talked about, Tim. Find a way to put the ball in play. Took his hands to the ball there, knob to the ball, found a hole, four hole, lot sweet of, swing. A lot of good things happen when you put it in play and make the other team make a play. Another one on the ground. Second baseman Gilmore to short. They got one. They throw back, and it will just be one. The four six fielder's choice. Gilmore and Ryu retire. Kimway, and now it is Campbell Foster. Two of the three hitters that Seattle has in their lineup to start the game. Seen the size of some of these guys. Um, it's just phenomenal. 5'10, 138. Balls a couple left. years ago, Todd, one of our researchers who I no longer speak to, looked up how many kids in the Little League World Series were taller than me. 52% of the of the Little Leaguers were taller than me. There's some big kids here. This one is up the middle. Fielded to the bag, and he does with his hand in the ball. Nice heads-up play by Gage Ryu. He knocked it down, found it with a hand, and tagged the bag. Fresh, fresh. We get ourselves two runs here. A clutch hit from Ryland Jackson. Taking the hands to the ball. Go. shown over the last few years that they are a formidable force once they get to Williamsport and at 7 o'clock Eastern time it'll be Ohio against El Segundo California the Great Lakes and the West region 
The West is always a power. Just like Japan, and Japan struggled yesterday, a no-hitter, but it was a tight, tight game. Maybe a little more parity at the Little League World Series this year. We'll see as it plays out. This ball laced to center field, and it is caught out there. Brooke Shuey is terrific. And there was never a doubt in his mind that was going to end up in the leather. Yeah, I watched him in infield very closely. He really can track a ball, including one over his head. He made a great run to that ball. It's a very good defensive team. Coach told me every time we take infield, we say, let's win infield. And they have so far. So Shuey with a nice catch in center to take away extra bases from Caden Oliver. And here is Anthony Picconi. He swings at the first one, and it's fouled in the mid. Strike after strike after strike. It's a pretty good formula. 0-2. Oh like I said it before, shortstop and third base, they're both playing in, and the opposite side, they're playing back. So as a coach, you got to understand the slow boys come. Mm. 22 pitches, guys, 17 of them strikes. That is remarkable. That's great for a major leaguer. This kid's 12. Major leaguers don't even do that. Closers maybe, but that is about a 77% strike rate. There comes Nathan Shelley. He's your left fielder at 5'183. Paint on the corner. We talk about pitch count all the time, man. 23 pitches so far in the second. Couldn't ask for anything better. Ball. Good take there by Shelley. He's a hockey player. A lot of these kids from Maine play football, they play hockey. And I love it, Todd. I love it that these kids are not specializing in one sport, they're playing them all. More common denominator of every big league player I've ever met. Multi-sports star in high school. Todd Frazier, great basketball player in high school. As we learned yesterday, 1,295 Five. points. Thank you. I got it right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes we, we have our kids 10 years old just playing baseball. I'm sorry. Put the, put the bat and ball down in yep. November and go make the basketball team. It will make you a better baseball player. Hand-eye coordination, footwork, conditioning. It's I think it's imperative at this age. 3-1 on the way to Shelley. 3-2, and two, our good buddy at Vanderbilt, Tim Corbin, of course, has ties to the Northeast and Maine in particular. I'll tell you, man, he recruits hockey players. He recruits athletes, not just baseball players. That's in there, strike three. And boy, Shelley was shocked at that call. He thought he would have had a walk and move to first. Instead, go grab a glove and head back out to the field. Four punch outs for Trey Kirch. Those that make sure that we're safe, the volunteer umpires as well. The Little League Community Heroes Recognition Program, it honors those individuals who not only volunteer their time at the local Little League programs, but contribute in other ways to improve their communities. You want to learn more, nominate a community hero, visit littleleague.org slash community heroes. Our kids correspondent, Pepper Hearsley, is here with another one of those stories. Hey, Pepper. Hi, guys. I'm here with Gary Kay, who has been an usher here at Williamsport for the Little League World Series for 45 years. Is that right? I've been involved in Little League for 45 years. I've been an usher here at the Little League World Series for 29 years. Wow. Well, either way, it's amazing that you've been involved for so long. What do you enjoy most about working for Little League? Being around the kids and seeing them play ball and all the fans that are with them. It's just an exciting time. It, you got to it's something you got to love to do. But uh, I love it, and I come back every year. And I'm already looking forward to next year. I got, you know, it's like a big family for us. The ushers and stuff come back, and you see the same ones every year. 
we stay in contact year round. So it's a big family, like a family reunion. Yeah, it's like a, it's a big family. I love that. What are some of your favorite memories from Little League? Oh, I've got a lot of favorite memories from Little League. Uh, I remember one of my favorite memories was Kentucky and Japan played here a few years ago for the championship. And it went seven innings and Kentucky won by one run on a home run in the bottom of the seventh inning. Wow, and you were there? It was there to see it. Yeah, that sounds like a very exciting game. But there's so many memories, it's hard to hard to recap all of them. But. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. Little League is filled with so many memories. I've been here for two years, and I definitely agree with you. So recently you won well, the Little League President's Award. Just tell us a little bit about that and what it means to you. Well, yeah, I won that uh, in 2018. Uh, it was a complete shock to me. Uh, I'm hum very humbled and to even be thought about in that in that avenue type thing. And uh, it was very special. I'm very honored and proud to represent Little League for that. All right. Well, yeah. What are some of what is what does it take to be an usher? What do you like most about this specific job at Little League? Well, I like being an usher just because you're here to help people and you get to see a lot of people. And you make friends. The people come back every year, that the visitors, and watch the game. And for being an usher, it's, it just fits me right. All right, well, thank you for all you do for Little League, and thank you for joining me today. I'll let you get back to your job. Right, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Back to you. All right, Pepper, thank you very much. We just saw Nolan Chang with the double that plated Sam Santos. So now the score is 3 nothing in favor of Seattle. Terrific story and a lifelong volunteer here who is already like most many of us looking forward to next year. Chang the leadoff hitter with the double so he stands out there for Kirchhoff the pitcher and he sees one sail high and inside. I talk to the groundskeepers every day. I talk to the coaches. They've never played on a field like this ever. That's how manicured it is. Todd when you played here the first time you must have said oh my goodness. Right? Heaven. This is heaven. And all the all the grounds crew they live up top of the hill there. Not many people know about that. You'll see them up there chilling out, relaxing. When you play on a beautifully manicured field, you don't develop bad habits when you're on a field where the ball's bouncing all over the place. <laughs> Tim will be up there shortly. Kirchhoff <laughs> spoils one, it's two and two. And the other side of that is when you don't play on the manicured fields, a lot of times you, you learn how to deal with bad hops. And it helps a lot of these young young kids out. And certainly you talk to a lot of major leaguers who didn't have the benefit of grass like this. And boy, did it make a difference. Kirchhoff, ground ball the second. They get the out at first. That's the first out of the inning. Gilmore with a nice play. Nolan Chang's double was about as far a ball as we've seen hit at Lomity so far. Fastball right down the plate. Sweet swing, stayed back on it. The biggest thing, Tim, when you use your hands in this game, you're going to be more explosive and you're going to find a way to get balls, get in the holes. And he really drove that ball to deep center. Hands are really underrated for a hitter, Todd. Freddie Lynn had great hands. Anthony, Anthony Rendon, yeah. tremendous hands. Hand strength, wrist, forearms, that, that's where all your hitters are strong. Owen oh, one to another strong one here. Owen oh, Luke. Remember Albert Pujols early in his career when you asked him, all right, so what are some of the secrets that you can share about hitting? The only thing he said was, I trust my hands. That's it. That's all you got left. Especially when you're off balance. Ball. Always amazed me. Tony Gwynn had the tiniest hands I've ever seen. <laughs> and nobody's hands were better at the plate than his. A bat was a magic wand in his hand. I would go three for four one day. Dusty Baker says, hey, you're going to sleep like Tony Gwynn tonight because he always slept good. <laughs> Luke, this one is trouble down the line, and it drops in for a hit. That brings in Chang. It's 4 nothing, Seattle. Not trying to do too much with two strikes. Simple approach right there. Fastball inside. Use your hands and drive it the other way. Boom, choked up a little bit. Another run coming in. Owen Luke, whose role model is Paul Goldschmidt, favorite player, I should say. 
Delivers an RBI, and now it's Larson Eng. So well, Larson Eng is the big stat guy, right? And he loves to go on. You know, you think about where these kids go with social media, et cetera. He searches. He goes on to baseball reference. He told me earlier that he loves to look up Babe Ruth and the best years he had when it comes to OPS, et cetera. <laughs> Go look at the 1920 and 21 seasons for Babe Ruth. Oh my goodness. That's kind of his reaction. How many 12 year olds you know are looking up Babe Ruth's OPS? Love it. Ball through. I'm still doing that today and I'm 66. <laughs> he also carries a lucky dime and a lucky penny in his back pocket for every game. <laughs> Remember Sean Burnett, left-handed reliever? Yes. He used to carry a poker chip in his back pocket for luck as a big leaguer every time. Just in case there was somewhere to go after the game. <laughs> mm, center field. Piccone. Two down. Todd, do you have any superstitions when you played? When I was 12, the only, only so I wasn't really superstitious. I guess maybe a little bit. I used to wear, oh my God, <laughs> Jesus, I mean, is that superstitious? <laughs> I used to not, never wear my jersey until the game started. That, that was my big thing. My goodness. God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> and his mom and dad. Ehrlichman up now. Well, that's up. That's a little high. Shots like that remind me of what here. Tito Francona said about this place. He said, Williamsport is where baseball meets the county fair. And it's exactly right. Yes. See how much mud is getting <laughs> crazed up there in the hill. <laughs> well, it looks like there may be some rain overnight. So if there's not a good enough track, it's going to be dynamite by tomorrow. You may fly all the way down to the uh, <laughs> second hill. Ehrlichman is a terrific story in himself. He's a, basically a self-taught catcher. The team will tell you, we had a bunch of them, but he became the team's best catcher. And he's a performer. He sings and he plays piano. And during COVID, his dad was telling me he decided to use those skills to raise money. And he started out with the idea of going to raise $500, sort of through Zoom with some close friends. And the parents said, let's go a little higher. Let's go to $1,000. He ended up to this point raising $20,000 wow. for a local food banks in the Seattle area. It's tremendous. And he can do the Rubik's Cube <laughs> in 20 seconds. That's impossible. Ball four. You guys can't do the Rubik's Cube, can you? Not in 20 years. No. He did it in 9.6 seconds. That's his record. And those guys, it reminds me of the, the magicians and the card tricks who know the trick, but they never tell you. Exactly. There's got to be something to doing Rubik's Cubes in nine seconds. Yeah, every year there's a kid here who's great with a Rubik's Cube and can do it under a minute, but under 10 seconds is amazing. Larson Eng is going to go in as a pinch runner. So Ehrlichman, the catcher, going contact. Okay, two down. Comes out, and here's Matthew Fisher. Singled his first time up. Oh, good swing. He was first pitch swinging the first time up. Got a knock up the middle. First pitch swing in here again. Two runs in here in the third, four nothing. Seattle over Maine. Ball, that's a little high. And to this point here, Oliver has thrown exactly twice as many pitches, 56, as Kirchhoff's 28. And you gotta, you gotta decide, you're down four nothing. Do you wanna save him for two days? Do you wanna save him or you wanna just let him run out there and hopefully you can make a comeback? And this is the tough part about understanding when to throw guys. Brad, great strategy in the deciding when you take a guy out or leave him in, right? I mean, that's a really big part of this tournament. Huge part of it. Seattle emphasizes we, we have a ton of depth. We've seen Whoa. that offensively. And they believe they have three or four pitchers after this who are 
who if not a one, they were two, three, four. Maine, a little less depth. Oh. Off speed, did he? No, oh. and that's called a oh. ball. Three balls, two strikes to Matthew Fisher. He went yard in the regionals, part of a four hit effort. Sitting dead red fastball right here. He got it, and that is through the hole. Lucas being waved in. Left fielder has it. I throw, not in time. Fisher moves up to second. And Eng, the pinch runner, is at third. Five to nothing, Seattle. He sat dead red, and Fisher got the pitch and delivered. Todd, some real quality at bats here by Seattle here. No doubt about it. Fundamentally sound. 2 2 count. Gets a curveball he lays off of. Easily could have went after and said, you know what? Up four. I'm getting a fastball here. Found a hole. And when you're hitting well, your hole, you'll find a lot more holes than you expect. This is Brett Taylor. He reached on an error. This was the one that went right over that bag. This one is up the middle. It is hitting the bag and can't be held on to another run. Hang is going to score. It is six to nothing. And a tough, tough play there for Ryu. It's the second time now that he, the ball, and second base have all come together. Give Taylor a hit. It's perfect placement. There's nothing else you can do. He got jammed. Great pitch by Oliver. He just got jammed, put in a great spot. Actually hit the top of the bag. Four runs now in for Seattle. And again, since that state championship, they've outscored their opponents by 80 runs. Chance for another one. And now throw down a third off the back of the runner. And that's going to allow go, Fisher go, 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 to come go. in to score right behind him. Taylor. Two will score on the play to make it eight to nothing. Boy, it is not going well for Maine. A bad break on a throw that was pretty good, but right off the back of Fisher, bounded down the line, and that allowed both he and Taylor to come in. Tell you what, base running was phenomenal right there. Taylor on the back end, not stopping, understanding once it got by him, I have an opportunity to score. And he came through. We could take a look back on this. Pass ball, did not know when to go, got caught in between. Emerging came up throwing, hits the runner go, go, in the back. Go, 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 Taylor go. did not stop running as you saw. Base move, didn't matter. Keep those wheels churning until your third base coach tells you when to stop. Textbook, textbook base running right there, especially at a young age. Do not stop until your coach tells you. Shoey, aggressive on the first pitch. So Shoey's great grandfather played against Stan Musial. In the minor leagues, yeah, with the Cardinal organization. How great is that? And he's too said, baseball reference will prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, Stan Musial, exactly as many hits at home as he had on, on the road in his career. 3,630 hits, exactly the same home and away. We went back 25 years for Tom's River. You have to go back to 1982 when the Kirkland Washington team won the Little League Baseball World Series. They had the wrong count and that must have been strike three. And that ends the inning. Confusion all around. It wasn't until somebody underneath said, don't look at that scoreboard. That is strike three. Big inning for the Northeast Seattle Little Leaguers. They've beaten Oregon 12-zip, Alaska 9-zip, Alaska 12-1 their last three games.
And they got an 8-0 lead here in game one of the World Series. Wait a second, Grant. Stop right there before you go to lunch. What is this I hear about your bacon obsession? Because I, full disclosure, have a similar obsession. It just makes me feel really good and yeah, it just like, it gets my hitting a lot better and my outfielding better. I understand you also have some nicknames that are wrapped around them. What is that? One of my nicknames is Bacon Brand and the other one's the Baconator. And who makes it? Your dad? Uh, yeah, my dad. Yeah, sorry, I didn't give you a little daddy for that one. It's still on, yeah. Your dad? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, well, guess what? I might have a little surprise for you. Cue Uncle Jamie, we got a little bacon for you. Baconator, thanks Uncle Jamie. Huh? How about that? I'm with you on this one. Can I pound it with you? Yep. Okay, great. Oh. <laughs> Can't help but watch somebody bury bacon and, and not think of our, our buddy Kyle Peterson, who, who puts bacon on everything. He will have bacon meals. And of course, he loved being here at the Little League World Series. Brought his son, Teddy, to college. So he wished Teddy the best of luck in college. And we're all thinking about KP. We miss having Mr. Bacon of our broadcast. Julie? Yeah, I, uh, I did that one for KP, actually. Because, yeah, I figured. Yeah. Uh, and when he when he pulled up that, that plate, I said, KP would be so upset if I'm not pounding this right here. So <laughs> I'm all in. I haven't had bacon since because I ate about five pounds of it. But <laughs> that was for you, KP. It's one of the, it's hard not to like bacon. Of course, on Kyle's Twitter bio, the first words are, I love bacon. <laughs> that's it, that's his first description. Let me ask you this, do you like it crispy or do you like oh, it crispy, like non-cooked? Sure. Crispy. Uncooked. Oh, wow. I'm, I need I need it burnt, like oh, black. Yeah, I, I, I want it black. Yeah. Every time I get it, I need my bacon crispy. No, I'm, I'm that way with toast and meat. I like it all very borderline not really cooked. <laughs> That can explain a lot of things, I'm sure. So, so Grant had a 10-pack of bacon in one of the regionals, like before a game, and then hit it inside the park homer in the game. What is a 10-pack? Does that mean 10 slices of bacon? I, I, I'm not sure, but that's a lot. Poor kitty. Probably, Poor kitty. Probably had to go to, I mean, yeah, that's good, but afterwards, he probably had to go to the bathroom really fast. <laughs> Ball. Poor guy. Shifting gears. Speaking of inside the park homers, did you see the ball in San Francisco last night? The major league. Yeah, ball? that was amazing. Hit the cement wall in the right field part of San Francisco and rolled all the way to center field ball. for the easiest stand up inside the park home run you'll ever see. Yes. This is Ben Gilmore. He also wormed his way into Frazier's heart because he's a 10 year old who accounted for 22 touchdowns during his football season. 22. As a 10 year old, we're talking to the manager. He's saying, listen, they weren't all thrown. He could run like the wind. So when he got the ball, you just run around everybody and kept going. That's that's pretty good as a 10 year old. Hard shot. That one looked it's like it was caught. We'll go to first it's anyway and get the out. Good strong swing from Ben Gilmore, but the second out. The excitement of the World Series downloaded in the new Little League World Series app. Fans can view schedules. You can watch the highlights. You can Plan your experience using the official Little League World Series app. Download it today for Apple and Android devices. We were talking Ben Gilmore. He is a quarterback, middle linebacker. How about that? Beautiful. Plays and, both sides. And a point guard. Right, point guard. Great athlete. Ten years old. This may not be the last time we see Ben Gilmore and his team from Maine being a ten-year-old. Seattle with an 8-0 lead. They've made a couple of defensive changes in a part of the continuous batting order. You're not required to have the players play in the field. And this is a liner to one of the new fielders, Campbell Foster, who picks it up. Alex Hanlon delivers a hit. A two-out bingo there from the extra hitter, Alex Hanlon. And Maine and their crowd celebrating the first hit of the day. He jumped the fastball because they really had trouble with Kershaw's Kershaw's Kershaw. Kershaw's <laughs> Freudian slip there. Appropriate. 16 breaking balls, 15 for strikes for a 12-year-old. Mm. 
Boy, I can't wait to tell Trey after the game that you called him <laughs> Kershaw. He's going to be so happy. The best they have. <laughs> Pass the saw. <laughs> Low. Our good buddy Charlie Steiner, who of course does a terrific job calling the Dodgers games. Ivan Deemer, another one of the extra hitters from Maine, spins one on the corner for a strike. Deemer is also a guy that is a historical, loves and respects, and says, My favorite player was Babe Ruth. Ball. God, Babe Ruth has more career shutouts than Pedro Martinez. Think about that for a second. And statistically, he's the greatest hitter of all time. I would love to see Babe play in this era right now. Some of them old timers, just to see how it, how they would fare. It would be interesting. He'd kill it. I am in the vast minority on this, Todd. I think if you gave him six months to figure it out, he'd be great. Not good, great. I'm with you. That's a strikeout of Deemer. That will do it for Maine. They do get the hit, but we are halfway through this one. Bottom three, all of those in the books. It is now 8-0 in favor of Washington. A Little League Baseball World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the Little League World Series. It's presented by T-Mobile. With the major leaguers coming in shortly, that's Sunday, the Phillies and the Nationals. And a reminder of the Little League stats you can find, they're being provided by Game Changer, the official scorekeeping stats technology partner of Little League and the Little League World Series. Game Changer now offers free live streaming for regular season local youth games, plus automatic video highlight clips when you stream and score your games. Julie Foudy is down on the field. Todd Frazier, Tim Kirchin up here in the booth with Carl Ravitch. And we do have a new battery. Caleb Barker is going to be the pitcher. Gabe Ryu has moved behind the plate. And Emergent is now the shortstop. Ten run rule, of course, in effect at the Little League World Series. Got to play four innings in that. Over the top fastball swung on and fouled straight back from Ryland Jackson. So I had a really nice chat with Christian Shuey, the manager of the Seattle team, and I found out he's a dentist. There you go. <laughs> Look out. There you go. I'm thinking of getting a new dentist, Todd. I went to my dentist the other day and I said, I got yellow teeth, what should I do? And he said, you should wear a brown tie. That's what he told me. <laughs> the whole, the, Todd, the whole, the whole truck, as soon as he said he's a dentist, you could hear in my ear, oh boy, here comes the tie joke. That's really good. That's <laughs> last year they So that's why they said it to me. I didn't know what they were talking about. So now you're in a, last year they bought me a brown tie <laughs> in Williamsport. So bad, sorry. Oh. Good. Jackson center field and that's down. Well, Seattle's bats guys, they hit 429 with an 1149 OPS in the regionals. And then you gotta make this cross country trip and you wonder like how are we gonna handle all this? Well, we know the answer for Seattle. And when they got here, 10 of their 12 kids had a stomach flu. Coach told me if we had played this game, we couldn't have played the game three days ago because half the team, most of the team was sick. Too much bacon? <laughs> Ball. favorite subject in school is ceramics. I have a cousin who went out to the West Coast and worked in San Francisco and taught ceramics. And one of the people who were in the class was Paul DeYoung. Really? Yeah. Wow. Paul DeYoung is a really smart guy. Really smart. Chemistry major in college. Swing and a miss from Shumway, and he is retired. 
He, know, he knows all the chemical symbols, like iron and all that. He knows them all. Time for us to meet Caleb Barker, the pitcher. Patrick Mahomes, the great quarterback. Big Poppy, his favorite baseball player, David Ortiz, fishing and hunting, which they do a lot of in Maine, two of his great hobbies. To support the point about multiple sports, Patrick Mahomes is a great basketball player. He was a great high school baseball player. When you watch him throw a football with his left hand occasionally, it's because he played these other sports. You know who else is a pretty good athlete? Steph Curry. Uh, he can golf. He can do that. Wow. He can shoot. And I think he scored more than 1,295 points in high school, Todd. You sure about that? I'm sure about All that. Right. You haven't learned yet, Todd. Tim's like a dog who gets his teeth into a bone. And he's not going to let the points Boy. in high school go away. No. This is going to be something that's just going to be brought up for the rest of your life. Second base, nice backhand play, Gilmore. And they do not get the double play, but a really good play by Benjamin Gilmore, who is shining. We, we've seen a lot of examples in recent years of great second base play. Ten-year-old Benjamin Gilmore is shining right now on this stage. Yeah, he makes a slight adjustment here with the backhand. Ball was hit too hard. Stays down on it. Nice, easy feed to emerge in there to second. Almost turn in double play. Pretty smooth. Sam Santos, who's a very good hitter. Remember, he reached on an error his first time up. And Sam Santos is the best defensive player that I saw in infield, and they haven't hit him a ball today, but he can really catch it and throw it. Yeah, I remember Christian Shuey telling me, the manager, saying, listen, we try and get one of our better hitters up at the end of the lineup to kick start right. the top of the order. Yeah, and now, you know, you need to be selfless because the end of the order is now the 12th hitter, yes. not the ninth hitter. To the backstop, and that's going to allow another base for the runner out there. Now at third base. Campbell Foster has gotten a lot closer to home without the benefit of a hit. Two and one to Santos. Foul by a few feet. How quickly when you were here, Todd, with Tom's River, did you figure out who the other really good teams were? Well, we looked at size first. The, the kids from Canada, I mean, oh my God, some of them I've never seen before. Uh, Japan's practice was phenomenal, like a well oiled machine. And we just figured it was the top 18, oh. so we figured they all got to be pretty good coming. You know, now it's 20 teams, but if you're the top eight teams coming here to Williamsport, you got to have some kind of Four. special talent. Drop, th drop 30, you don't want to throw it. That's right in front of them, okay? Sun shining now over Lobbity on a 2-2 to Santos. The ball three and two and the ball right there at home. Some of the kids from Maine have had the Czech Republic kids as their bunk mates. Isn't that one of the great parts about this is that you meet kids from other countries and play some ping pong, video games, yes. Don't even need to speak the language. Nothing. Your kids and you get along, right? Without a doubt. Three and two and a slow roller foul. Todd still collects those pins. He's asking everyone, umpires, you got a pin? Collects them, creates them. Yes. Tremendous. I got a nice one coming. <laughs> you guys saw it today. I saw it. It's the size of a of a wrestling belt buckle. <laughs> and it's huge. Frying pan. I mean, did you see it? It's a frozen pizza, yeah. <laughs> it's bigger than a base. It's all for the kids. 3-2, and that's going to get in there. That plates Foster, and a good job by Santos. Again, the value of a hitter at the bottom of the order that can hit and then turn it over to the top. Again, Todd, another opposite field hit. They are hitting the ball where it's pitched, putting it in play. Good things happen.
This will bring Nolan Chang to the plate for the third time. And last time up, he had a rocket double to center field. It's 9-0 now, Seattle here in the top of the fourth. Oh. Parker, man, that direct over-the-top approach with that fastball. A little bit Chris Young-like, the guy that is now running the Texas Rangers, who is a terrific pitcher at the major league level. I don't see too many come straight over. <laughs> oh, and two through the eyes of the camera on top of the umpire mask. Ump cam shows us the 0 2. Ball, it's out. Ball. Seattle has nine runs on eight hits, and this is, again, the third time up for Chang. Meantime, Maine hasn't gone through their order one time with the 14 hitters. Got to give a shout out at Varlamos Pizza out there in Washington. They're going crazy over there. That's their watch party. Hopefully it's just as good as the Northeast because I love me some pizza. <laughs> Favorite toppings, Todd, for you? It just depends. I have my certain pizzerias where I like some. I like pepperoni at, you know, this certain place. I like buffalo chicken, sausage. I mean, it just depends. Chicken parm, making me hungry now. Two and two. Up the middle, that's going to get through, and that's going to bring in Santos. Here's the throw home. He's in. Chang delivers the RBI, and that gives them 10 here in the top of the fourth. Now, this is not a team that has hit a ball over the wall, but they have nine hits. How many have gone right back up the middle? They have found every hole on this field today. They've got nine hits. How many total hits were there yesterday? Well, this is the first team that has had more than five hits. There were eight, Michael, our stat extraordinaire, Michael's got 18 hits total yesterday, yeah. and Washington has nine hits alone. There's the run rule, so they are at the 10 run. They have to play the bottom of the fourth, and we'll hope Maine can get some runs to keep this one going. Just quickly back to the pizza conversation, because we've had many, as you know, green room conversations. Are you a pineapple guy on no, pizza? I, I think that's... I think that's rude. I don't think anybody should ever put. Okay. You put that on 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 pie, and we got problems. I'm not, I'm not friends with you. The third out is made. Let me just ask it a different way. What if somebody brought you a pizza with pineapple on it? I would I would throw it back in their face and tell them to get the heck out of here. That is not pizza. Watching it doing dirty. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of this Little League World Series presented by T-Mobile on this gorgeous Thursday afternoon here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, Lomity Stadium. We'll head down to volunteer for our next game about 35 minutes from now at 5 p.m. Eastern time and then back here at 7 for Ohio and California. This guy has been the story. And it's not really been the fastball, it's been that pitch. Trey Kirchhoff has been Dynamite on the mound, limiting the New England champions to one hit so far. Todd, strike after strike with a breaking ball. How impressive is that? It's very impressive. Not the biggest guy either. Nasty sweeper he's got there. He's used to perfection today. Our Geico game track shows him with three innings, six strikeouts. And yeah, they played in six runs in the third, surrounded by two in the second and two more in the fourth. Caden Oliver out three innings, eight runs. So man's got to get busy here or this one is going to end before we see the fifth inning. I find it phenomenal to think that he can go one, two, three here through four innings and they've only seen one at bat so far. That's crazy. That would be it. Well, only one hit in the game. Other than that, 
Base runner in the first was the walk to Mason Armagen. That's it. So he gets literally 12, 13, and 14 in this inning. And if he retires them, Gabe Ryu, the leadoff hitter, will have hit one time in a four-inning game. 1-1 one, one to Westcott. He'll cut at it. He, he wants to be a landscaper someday. You know who would be really good at that is Ravi. He's great in the yard. He's good with his hands. He's tiny and get through everywhere he needs to be. One of my favorite professions ever, landscaping, lawn cutting. It's the instant gratification part of it. Paul strike three. You know, Todd, it's like vacuuming. You put lines, you know, in the carpet. You put lines on the lawn like they do. Look, look at the lines here, how beautiful this ball field is. Beautiful. I love I love some good lines in a lawn. Good tight mulch bed. I'm all about it. The smell of mulch. Yeah. Seven strikeouts of the game for Kirchhoff. And this one on the ground, and that's fielded cleanly. Sam Santos. Every time the ball has been put in play, this Seattle team has been terrific. In center field, Shuey. Santos at shortstop. And they are one out away from run ruling Maine. Here to open it up. I think the biggest thing here too as well, he's got up to 50 pitches to go and he'll be he'll only have to take two calendar days. So he has three pitches left to save him for two. That's unbelievable the way he's Ball. been pitching. Most likely his last batter here, I would assume. I would think you're a hundred percent correct. And Beckwith. The winner of this game will not play again until Monday. Todd, so it's Thursday. That gives you Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He could oh, conceivably yeah. come back and start that one. Even better. Todd, did you have any long delays here at all when you played? I mean, that's a long time to not play a game. We had a three-hour delay in Bristol in the semifinal game. We won one nothing, <laughs> And that was it. Swing and a miss, and that is it. Awfully, awfully impressive by Seattle. Ten nothing, the final score on nine hits. And the good news for Maine, they'll get another chance to stay alive here. As the New England champion takes it on the chin today. Never know how your kids are going to react when they get to Williamsport. And one team looked sharp, the other team looked like a little moment might have been a little bit bigger than they thought but you know now that they've done it once the next time probably a lot smoother and a lot more comfortable they got hurt by some of their errors early in this game well, Washington played a really good game defensively they put the ball in play offensively found a bunch of holes and Ty Kirchhoff was really good eight punch outs for the starter four innings of work on the crowd from Seattle all on their feet wearing their green to cheer on their kids their coaches and their community it's fascinating the top two in the seattle order each hit three times and after four innings nobody hit twice for maine so they played four innings and they didn't bat around in four innings Plenty more to do from here. Julie Foudy going to grab some of the kids, and this is a fascinating group of kids. Should be real good to listen to what they have to say about this victory and their experiences this summer. Stay with us. This one is over. 10-0, Washington. Mighty Casey was, of course, the Seattle team today. Julie Foudy, they won it 10 to nothing. gave up just one hit. What a game for them. And I've got Trey Kirchhoff and Matt Fisher here with me, two of the rock stars that led the way. Trey, let's start with you. Complete game, one hitter. How important to get that first win in? Uh, very important because it starts. It all starts in the first game. Uh, you really just got to set the tone in the first game, and then it just carries you throughout the tournament. And Matt, you at bat, two for two. Uh, RBI scored two runs. You did it in front of your family. Talked to Grandpa Walt earlier and your sister Corinne as well. How important to do it in front of your family? What did that mean to you? I mean, it felt a lot, but I was just trying to play my game. Like, playing in front of all these people feels just so special. 
It is indeed special. And Trey, you all have had some sickness this week. You were saying that you hadn't felt so great this week. How's it been for you guys? And to pull off that big a win with what you've been through this week. Yeah, when we first got here, uh, our our catcher, Nathan, he was he was super sick. He threw up on the plane. That kind of spread throughout the team. Even even me, I got sick. I, I threw up all night about like three nights ago. And I, I, we've just been slowly getting better. Even before this game, our one hitter threw up right before his first at bat. Okay. And then just played throughout the entire game. Yes. So, yeah. We, we did maybe see a little bit of that. And, and, and to think about you guys being able to pull off this victory in the middle of all that is, is crazy to think about. Hey, Jules. The other stat. Julie. That is so, yes. I, th I think we have to, <laughs> don't we have to ask Fisher about his sister and, and this sort of, if you won the lottery, oh. we got to get to the bottom of that. Yeah, yeah. they want to first get to the bottom of, uh, Matthew, your sister might have spilled the beans on you a little bit, but when we were talking about how you said, you know, if I won the lottery, I wanted to give it to cure type 1 diabetes, and she said, that, well, the backstory is, he said, I wanted to choose it to get some chicks, but maybe that's not going to fly <laughs> on ESPN. Do you want to respond to your sister, Matthew? <laughs> you have got nothing to say to that. Come on, Matthew, tell me it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Okay, back to my stats. Did you know this? You guys have outscored opponents since the, since the regionals, 43 to 1. Come on, tell me about what makes this team so good. I mean, it's crazy. Like, he's just pitching every shutout. He only let up one run in the regionals. It's just like, our pitching is so good. Well, this ace is so good. It's just, um, and we score lots of runs. Like, we get, um, we talk to our teammates about what, what does it look like. So, and like, we talk. So we know what it's about to look like. Yeah. And, and one thing, too, that we don't really talk about enough is how much do the coaches, you got an incredible coaching staff here with Christian and the rest of the guys. How much does that help as well, Trey? It helps a lot. Uh, Christian is the coach that really just pushes us around and makes make sure we're not all goofing off and that we're really in the in like the right mindset. Stosh is our like our kind of guy who he, he can laugh and joke, but he's also pretty serious. And then Ben's just like the fun dude that's always around. And but he, he can get some, he can get serious sometimes. And he's also our PP thrower. So thank you, Ben. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. And you always need the fun dude, right? That keeps you loose. So um, I, I just want to say after the week you guys have had, big high fives all around. Congratulations on that big first opening win. Best of luck the rest of the week and have fun. Get on that hill too, right? Get on that hill. Maybe not the money. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. You think they eat pineapple on pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you one thing, they went right into uh, terrific answer mode, both of them, and he was in great pitching mode from Jump Street. Yeah, and it first started off, first pitch of the game, first three pitches, <laughs> slider, sweeper, sweeper, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely filthy, and then he threw that fastball for dominance as well. I think they had a great game plan with Stosh, the pitching coach, figuring out how to throw these guys and how to get them off balance, and I think that was the biggest key throw that slider sweeper in the beginning, and next thing you know, dominate with that fastball out. So we saw DJ Jablonski last night really pitch. I mean, he was he was yeah. dotting. He was, he was an artist out there, and same with Trey Kershaw today. That's how you have to do it. You don't have to be the hardest thrower in the world. Both of these kids have proven if you know how to pitch, you can get kids out. Your experience, you heard him say, well, the first game is like so important. You establish how the rest of this tournament is going to go. Do you recall like the importance of game one at the Little League World Series for not, you? Not necessarily. So when I played, it was round robin. So if you lost, you still had an opportunity. Different. If That's you true. won two games, you were going to make it to the U.S. final. We played 11 innings, and we just wanted to keep playing. I think that was the best part of it. You were on this immaculate field. You wanted to keep playing. We didn't know what was going to happen. It wasn't about pitching, uh, how many pitches you threw. It was about how many innings. I think one guy threw over 140 pitches for the other team, which is insane to me now to think about. Tim, you would love that. You'd be sitting here going crazy. But we didn't know what to expect. We were just trying to win. You get your first game, and then you have a little breathing room. Very impressive. The, the two teams last night, Texas was, was really good. And, of course, this team right here, there are certain attributes in a team that you realize, like, this, this could play here for a little bit. The pitching, their defense, they had a lot of balls kind of go right up the middle, which is a good approach. And uh, th there's your guy right there, DJ Jablonski. You know how you can tell? Great flow. Great flow. Great flow. <laughs>
Really good pitching continues. That's what the story has been in Williamsport so far. Seattle a winner 10-0. Moving our way to the 5 o'clock game down at Volunteers. Stay with us.